today I'm going to do some art journaling. The journal I'm going to use is really nice. It's got really thick cardstock type paper. I found this at a garage sale for a quarter. The paper is perfect for journaling. In my next journal video, I'm going to go over some different types of journals that you can use. But just for this video, I'm just going to use this one. There are so many different kinds of journals that you can use. You're going to need some different embellishments. You can use pieces of junk mail, old scrap papers. You can use cutouts from magazines or old books. You can use scrapbooking stickers. I happen to have a box full of goodies. You can use old cards that you got for your birthdays or pieces of junk mail, lots of origami paper, just hundreds, maybe thousands of different little scraps and you can find these at craft stores for reasonable prices. Once you start collecting them, you'll know what to look for. Once you get used to your personal journaling style, because it takes a while to figure out exactly your style of journaling. One example of that is whether or not you use paint or if you just collage. But I happen to use paint. So that brings me to the next thing. You're going to have different kinds of paint. I would use the cheapest crafting acrylic paint you could find. Because sometimes you put down a good amount of paint on your page. And you don't want to run out and buy expensive paint to just slap down on a page. Now, sometimes, on occasion, if I did an elaborate drawing, I will paint with my really good paint. But most of the time, it's this cheap paint. And since it's so cheap, you can afford lots of it. I have just about every color ever imaginable. And if you want to go in between the good paint and the cheap paint, you can get Martha Stewart, which is still pretty good quality paint. I also like to use the paint markers or paint pens. These work well. That brings me to brushes. Of course, if you have paint, you need brushes, and I've got quite a few brushes also. I won't spend too much time showing you brushes because I just did a whole video with makeup brushes, but you get the idea. You're gonna need lots of different paintbrushes.
Also, you can use several kinds of paint. I've got a small package of watercolors that I keep on hand because certain pages, the pictures just call for watercolor instead of acrylic. You never know until you start working exactly where that picture is going to lead you. Sometimes I'll even use something like spray paint. You never know what mood you'll be in. We definitely are going to need some good brushes. But don't go out and spend a lot of money until you get good and started on a journal. It's best not to invest until you know what direction you're going to go. Okay, so I've got some little things that are very inexpensive. You can get them anywhere nowadays. Different shapes. There are some letters and numbers. We got some seasonal ones. They're very inexpensive to use as embellishments. And now I'm going to show you some stamps. They're foam stamps and they're wooden stamps. I like to use both really. Once again, I've got a pretty large collection of these, but just to show you the idea, sometimes you want to use some bigger ones that will cover a good deal of area on your page. And a lot of times you'll use the letter stamp. They come in handy quite often. Another thing I like is to use different colors of ink. These inks are very inexpensive. They're about a dollar at Walmart. And I've got one of every color. stamps. They're larger. 
also got them the letters and numbers. Another thing that you might find interesting, some of the products from Tim Holtz, different stains, powders, different kinds of stamps that make your page look distressed. Sometimes you want to get an aged look or an antique type look. And the Tim Holtz products are great for that. Something you'll definitely need if you use those products is a little spritzer with water in it. It comes in handy. Now, I like to put personal artwork in my journal, so I always have my sketch pad on hand, and I'll have a graphite pencil and a gummy eraser, because I like to put my own sketches in my journal. I'll sketch them, and then I'll put them in the journal. I'll glue them down and I'll paint over them with acrylic paint. Got my pen here. This is made by the people that make the smash books. And it's really neat because it's got this felt tip pen on one side, which has got a great tip for journaling. And on the other side, it's got a glue stick for collaging, which really comes in handy if you're in the middle of journaling. You can just dot some glue and paste down whatever it is that you're putting down on the page. Of course, besides pencil and pen, there are going to be other medium you use. Also, besides paint, so I do use some colored pencils. On occasion, I'll use different pastels, soft pastel. I use oil pastels, the chalky ones, whatever you have. Pastel is really good for getting a good wash of color all over the page. Sometimes I'll use marker. What I use quite often is watercolor pencils. I've got different brands because I like different colors in each brand. And they're really nice. You just color your picture with colored pencils. And then you dip a little paintbrush in water. And you go over it and it makes a nice washed watercolor look for your picture. It's really nice to have. interesting that I've been using to make borders on my pages is all of the different kinds of duct tape that they have nowadays. This one's got mustaches on it and I happen to really like mustaches. <laughs> and they just come in some nice colors. 
They come in every color imaginable and some really pretty patterns also. And if you make a mistake on your page, you can always go put some duct tape over it. And it looks like you meant to do. Something else I have is a box of ribbon. The ribbon also makes great border. And you can find it very cheap. And you can find so many different varieties. There's really so much you can do with it. I'd say that it's an invaluable part of my junk journaling. Everyone's different. But I know that for myself, I have to have ribbon. Something else I use a lot. Different kinds of glue. But, mainly, you're going to use Mod Podge. I like to use it as a sealer over my pictures, but you also can use it as an adhesive. This particular one is for fabric and tissue, because I tend to use fabric and tissue a lot to add texture to my page, but I've also got one that's just for paper. And if you get the glossy finish, you'll have a nice glossy sheen over each page. In the same box, I keep all spray adhesives and little glue sticks. I keep gesso, uh, things like matte medium, string gel, or any kind of medium to add to your paint to give you a different texture. I keep all of that together in one box. You would be surprised how many different things you can do with paint. Something else I use is a heat tool. This is a bit advanced. You probably won't buy this right off the bat. But it really comes in handy if you want to work quickly. If you've put down a sealer and you want to move on and put some other layers on your page, this heat tool allows you to do that because it will dry that glue within seconds. And this is something that's not necessary, but I still want to show it to you. <laughs> it's an extra large paper clip. I just really like it. I have it for no reason whatsoever. Other than I just think it's cute. Something else I keep is a bag of scraps. I keep things like paint samples because I have about 48,000 379 of these. So I keep a few in this scrap kit for different colors that I might need. Something that they have at Walmart is 97 cent fabric samples. They give you a good amount of fabric for a really nice price. Fabric makes a great texture for your journal. 
Ah, so cute little scraps of just random cutouts. Anything that I'm not going to use all of, I keep the rest of it. And that's what I recommend that you do as well. Keep everything that you have that's extra. Like I said before, you're going to keep magazines, not only for the pictures in the magazines, but for the texture. You'll see what I mean. I intend on doing a few more videos with different collage techniques in them, and I'll show you different ways to do different techniques on your pages. And quite a few of them are going to use magazine pages. The thing else I use for texture is tissue paper. Two different kinds of tissue paper. The first kind is actual tissue. You can pull the plies apart and mod podge them down over a picture and it looks like a double layer picture. And the second type of tissue is actual tissue that you would use to wrap a gift with. I think I've done enough rambling on about supplies. Oh, one more thing though. You do need to have a cleaner for your paint brushes if you're using paint. And you need to have, you can put the pink, let's see if I have any to show you here. like the pink soap for your brushes or something like that and some water. That way you can continue to work uh, without leaving your brushes with paint in them. 
you don't want to do that because it, you will ruin your brushes, believe me. Also guys, forgive my fingernails. I'm sorry they are a hot mess right now. I'm really sorry about that. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate mail about my nails, but... I am going to start with a fresh page. And this is some really good thick paper. I could probably just do just fine without even laying any texture down at all. Usually, it's going to be in need of texture when you're using something like a composite book. It has really thin paper. In that instance, I would say to go ahead and glue two or three sheets together and then put down your texture. If I didn't glue anything to this, it would probably hold just fine. But just for the sake of showing you how, I'm going to go ahead and use some tissue paper. You want to get some, just rip it in different shapes. Don't worry too much about the shape. If you're not planning on painting, then the color of the tissue will be a factor. But since I'm going to paint over mine anyway, I'm not worried about what color it is. May even crinkle it up a little bit. Just to show you, I'm going to take a page from an old encyclopedia, which in itself can be a journal because you can do what's called an altered book journal. If there's an old book that's outdated information or something that you were going to throw away anyway, you can paint over the pages and make a journal. It's got excellent binding, of course and so it will hold together really nicely. But in this situation, I always wish I could do it like my friend Kath. If you guys haven't watched her video, I'll have to give you a link to it, but I'm sure you guys have seen her amazing 
book tapping video. But, back to what I was saying. I'm going to take some pages out. said I wouldn't recommend doing this with a book that's worth saving, but this encyclopedia is from the 80s, <laughs> so it's a lot of outdated information. So this is a great way to recycle something old. Okay, so now I've got your paper. I'm going to lay it down with some Mod Podge. Now this is for tissue. If you're going to use tissue and regular paper, it's okay to use the tissue one for both. My regular Luster Mod Podge that I have, I let a friend borrow of it and she left it open overnight so it dried out. But that's okay because this one is just fine to use. Now you're going to let it get a little bit on your brush. And I'm going to put some on the back of the page. And I'll lay it down like that. And then I'll go over the page, takes down those edges, and also it seals it, kind of like a decoupage, actually. This is the same material that you would use to decoupage. Get those edges down flat. And then with the tissue, you can do it one of two ways. You can lay it flat and gently go over it. Or you can take a crumbled piece and push it down, crumpled, and that gives you a more raised texture. There are really so many different possibilities. And you can be very liberal with the sealer. I'm really sorry. I live near a major hospital and there is a life flight helicopter flying overhead right now. Sorry about that. Okay. I've got some spots to fill in. It really won't make that much of a difference on this thick paper. But, 
just for fun, let's go ahead and do them. Remember that with the thicker paper, we should always put some down on the first side for glue. You don't have to do that with thinner tissue. And now, I recommend that you use one brush for Mod Podge and keep it labeled for Mod Podge and label it and don't use it for anything else. I'm going to get a little water on my brush and then I keep it to the side. I don't mix it in with the rest of my brushes. Pretend like this whole page is covered. I'm going to get some paint. I think purple would be great since we've got some purple down. Gosh, I hope that wasn't too loud, guys. I'm so sorry if it was. I'm going to drop some paint down. Try to keep everything quiet. Like I mentioned in my last video, I want you to be able to put these videos on your playlist. That's why no commercials. I feel like if I put commercials on my videos, then it's going to wake you up in the middle of the playlist, especially if you're wearing headphones. It's like a huge jolt to the brain and it is very uncomfortable. That's why I try not to let any loud noises interfere. So if that paint cap interfered with your ability to use this video, then I am truly sorry. See, I'm just putting a nice coat of paint. My first step is always to get some color down on my page. I want to add lots of things to it and different washes and different types of antiquing looking things to it, but the very first thing is getting color down. Like I said, I'm using inexpensive paint so I can be very generous with it. I like vibrant colors. Now, under normal conditions, I let this dry with a piece of wax paper between the paint and the next page. But, for the sake of the video, I'm going to go ahead and keep working with the paint still wet. I like to take this fan brush and smooth it out. Of course you've got texture underneath there, so you're not necessarily making the page smooth. You're getting the clumps out of any paint. 
I've also put down brown paper for my circuits. I've got a huge industrial roll of the brown paper. One thing is don't worry about if you get paint on a page like that. Don't worry about that. This is a junk journal and you're supposed to put as much junk as you can. Pages are going to get messed up. They're going to get other colors on them and they're going to get ripped and torn. And That's okay in a journal like this. That This is the most liberating form of journaling because it's really okay to have mess. As a matter of fact, I think it gives it a little character. If you put your blood, sweat, and tears into something like this, then you want to show every little step that you took. I think that it's appropriate to make this an ASMR themed page. So I think what I'll do is first I'm going to put a little texture on the page. I kind of like it sometimes when I can see, oops, that's one reason to let it dry first, right there. I like to be able to see the words. can see the words from the book underneath. The more layers of things that I put on here, the cooler that will look to have those words showing beneath there. Okay, got a lot of sticky paint. I think I'm going to put down some letters. I'm going to spell out ASMR. Yeah, I've got lots of letter stickers in here. Tell you what I might do is use these foam pieces. I had someone critique my artwork on my first journaling video. But in all honesty, I do these videos mainly for relaxation purposes. I could show you some really detailed and gorgeous journals that I've done. But I'm not aiming uh, to win an award from, from my artwork on these videos. I'm really just trying to get as many nice sounds and relaxing things in them as I can. It just so happens that there are some lovely sounds in this process. So, that may make me focus less on the artwork. And if that drives some of you guys crazy, then I'm really, really sorry. But for me, it's more about helping you relax than it is about my artwork. In fact, I may do a video where I just show you some of the cool journals I've done because they can get very elaborate. I'm really proud of some of them. When you finally do finish a full journal, you have this sense of completion. It's a happy feeling. It's something compared to the way I feel when I finish a painting. Because I paint also. I draw and I paint. And I think 
this is more rewarding because I do acrylic painting, not oil. But it's similar to finishing an oil painting where you work on it a little bit and let it dry and work on it again, etc. While this is sitting for a minute, I'm going to show you some of the things that I didn't get to show you. I've got a lot of cardstock and different textured papers. that it's good to have for the purpose of the collaging is a big part of it for lots of people. So you want to have different pieces of paper this is actually a sheet of duct tape, just like they have the pretty colored duct tape. Now they make it also in sheets where you can cut out whatever shape you'd like. They've got so many different colors and textures of paper. This paper has adhesive backing and it's actually a chalkboard surface. You can write on it with chalk. You can use the adhesive and attach this to a surface like a wall or a dresser and you'll have a nice chalkboard surface. But I plan on using it for a page in a journal and then attaching a piece of chalk so that I can change the entries according to my mood just on that one page.
and got a palette for mixing paint on. Some different cardstock colors. Different packs that come with different designs as well. 